it's me Gangelus. Thank you for visiting my channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you to build another new model, a simple one. This is trainer for you to learn to fly. This is Bangmo 2, as you can see here. It's smaller and slimmer than Bangmo 1. This is Bangmo 1. And also, it has different landing gear configuration in Bangmo 1. It has this cycle like this, and this Bangmo 2, it has tail dragger. You can learn to take off and landing with landing gear without worrying, damaging the landing gear or damaging the fuselage because if you hard landing this plane, uh, the landing gear will be detached from the fuselage and not damaging the fuselage or landing gear itself. This plane already fly uh, the last weekend on a Saturday uh, and already crashed multiple times. Uh, as you can see here, there is no major damage, only scratch here and there, then on the nose, but that's it. It's still survive, multiple crash and we'll fly again okay let's build this thing you can download these plans on my website paper-replica.com there's a direct link on the description Print it on A4 paper or you can use a zero size format. Cut all segments and combine it into an individual parts. and then trace the individual parts onto 5mm foam sheet. I use 5mm polyfoam, depron, or XPS foam. Finally, cut each part with cutter knife. Hold the cutter knife as low as possible and cut slowly with mild pressure in two or three passes to cut the foam. Follow the steps to build the fuselage. Apply glue on foam about 10 cm wide, glue the parts one step at a time. You have to hold still the parts at least 30 seconds, until the glue is set and strong enough to hold the parts. Do the same in every gluing process. And then continue gluing the rest. Add velcro on the battery base. 
I use the soft side of the velcro on the base and the rough side on the battery. Use heat gun and metal pipe to bend and curve this part. Sanding all sharp edges before apply covering to the fuselage. Sending the leading edges of vertical and horizontal stabilizer like this. Sending one edge of the elevator like this and sending into rounded shape on the other edge. Also do the same for the rudder. Cover the nose with cloth tape for extra strength. I ran out of white packing tape, so I use clear packing tape like this to cover the fuse lines. After all stabilizers already covered, you can attach them to the fuse last. I use small cello tape for control surfaces hinges.
sanding the leading edge like this. And also send the trailing edge like this. By using a heat gun and metal pipe, bend and curve the top part of the wing like this. Before closing the wing with the top part, attach the foam spar and airfoil former to the lower part of the wing. Hold and press it at least 2 minutes before release it. Glue and close the wing tip like this. I use 9mm plywood for a wing joiner. Make holes on each side of the wing just behind the spar to insert wing joiner. Fill any gap with hot glue. Finally, cover the wing with packing tape, start from the bottom side. If you want to paint packing tape cover, you need to sanding it first with 240 medium grit sand paper. Add rubber band to the nose cover for locking system like this. Add chopsticks to the fuse last for tying the rubber bands to tie and secure the wing. Bend and shape 3mm bicycle wheel spoke wire according to the plans. And then mark the wire position on 9mm plywood landing gear base. Dig a ditch or an indentation following the wire position so the wire can be submerged into the plywood. And then glue the wire to the plywood base with epoxy glue. After an hour, you can work with the landing gear base again. Add stoppers from small masking tape to secure the wheels. I use 60 mm foam wheels.
mark the landing gear position like this. And then add stoppers on front and rear position with foam covered with packing tape like this. Also use chopsticks to clean the rubber band that will hold the landing gear. Trace the aileron with a guide from the plants and place the aileron 12 cm from the wingtip. Cut on one edge about 2 mm for aileron free movement and also cut the bottom side about 5 mm and sand it like this. Close the gap on the wing with foam like this. I use cello tape for aileron hinge. Install the aileron servos like this. Combine two servo wires into one input. Make sure servo already in neutral position when installing the servo arm. And then attach control horn on the aileron. Add push rod and stopper. I use Krustin terminal as a stopper. Add plastic part on the tail like this. Add control horns on rudder and elevator. And then install rudder servo. Elevator servo. I use plastic straw that made into smaller roll to guide the push rods.
I use epoxy glue to assemble the motor mounting. After an hour, the motor mounting is ready. You can see here, I added another layer of plywood to the base. I used Turni G2826 2200KV brushless motor. Install it with servo screws. Double with foam inside the firewall. I use 50M ESC. In this setup, you can use at least 40M ESC. Add some kind of fairing in front of the motor to reduce drag. I use styrofoam block and cover it with packing tape and then glue it on top of the wing. Color the motor mount with black. I use acrylic paint. guys let's talk about uh, basic RC model planes basic knowledge of RC model planes I usually don't explain in detail about this stuff this RC parts how to use it how to combine it but because this is the episode for beginners so I need to explain it to you how to use it and how to combine it Guys, but first I need to share with you that RC hobby is not the same as robotic hobby. Uh, it's it's similar but not the same. Uh, RC hobby is much sim simpler, much easy to do than the robotic. You don't need to knowledge how to code programming your your robots or your parts or electronic parts to do whatever you like it uh, doing. But in RCOB, we just use ready-made parts that available in the market. You can buy it, what uh, you need, and combine it and use whatever you want to do. Okay, uh, let's start. Begin. RC models is basically the same from aircraft, RC boat, RC cars, RC tanks like this. It's basically the same same component and same uh, logic how to use it it's just different specification but the parts is basically the same RC parts or RC component in my understanding divided into four main parts which is HR transmitter this is the transmitter this how, how the input, how you command the unit, how do you command the, your models, whatever model is, you can use it for cars, for tanks, for boat, for ship, or airplane, like we do. Transmitter, the first main part, transmitter, receiver, or plants like this. this our plants is contain of three parts and actuator four parts transmitter receiver power plant and actuator just four parts you can use this combination with for whatever your models the the simple one the simple one is uh, RC boat or RC ship. You just need this one actuator for rudder. 
just to control rudder and one power plant. So basically, the boat or cars just need one servo for steering and for power plant. Now let's talk about the transmitter, the radio transmitter. This is what the radio transmitter looks like. Like this. It's all 2.4 gigahertz. That's the frequency. That's the mainstream frequency. There, there are many other frequency like FM or lower than this for long range. But the mainstream we use 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, just like, just like a Wi-Fi frequency. Uh, this is the configuration of the stick. This is mode 2. Mode 2 is throttle here. Throttle is for uh, increasing your speed, uh, the motor speed. And rudder, left right for the left stick, rudder is for for yawing movement like this it's yawing the starter yawing the plane will move like this okay so yawing this is called yawing and the right stick is elevator elevator, elevator is to move these control surfaces like right, right here if you Pull it down, pull it down, the, the elevator will be up. Pull it down, it will be up. And the plane will be pitched up and gain altitude. If you push it forward, over up, uh, the elevator will be moved down and the plane will be pitched down. That's how elevator works. Down, the plane up, pull, push forward, the plane will get stuck. Okay. And the last is the aileron. Aileron is placed here, in the edge of the wing, here. If you move the aileron to the left, the left aileron will be up and the right aileron will be down. You, you, you must remember this. Left, left aileron up and right aileron down. And if you move the stick right, the right aileron will be moved up and the left will be moved down. So the plane will be in if I uh, pull, put pull the stick to the left the plane will bend to the left to the right and bend to the right it's, it's called rolling movement okay that's the basic setup the control setup for RC planes okay now the receiver this is what the receiver look like looks like this belong to here this is ground receiver some receiver has has one antenna like this and this one is have two antenna usually its receiver communicates with the same brand of transmitter like this this is Robner and this transmitter it can communicate but it cannot communicate with other other brand but lately there there is there are many transmitter that have multiple protocol like this this is multi protocol it can bind to many receivers that have different brand every receiver has different channel that available like this one this is 8 channel this is 6 channel and also this 6 channel 
for RC model plans, you need at least three channel. But four channel is usually good for channel. And the order of this pin is usually channel one for aileron, channel two for elevator, channel three for throttle or motor, channel four for rudder, channel five for landing gear if you have retract landing gear and channel 6 for flaps and the rest is you can you can use for other stuff like opening door or releasing stuff like this releasing uh, toy bombs or others or releasing parachute okay the receiver has to be powered by 5 volt DC it, it came it comes up from EDSC, EDSC with battery. This is this is the ESC, uh, the brushless ESC. The three cables goes uh, go to the motor like this, and this is for battery. And this one goes straight to the RX. RX or receiver. This cable will give 5 volt, 5 volt power to the to the receiver. So without without power, the receiver will be off and cannot be cannot communicate with transmitter. When the, when the power is plugged in, it will be on and ready to. Uh, and ready to power the cell phone. Okay, we've talked about transistor and receiver. Next, we will talk about. Now we we'll talk about power plant. This is the power plant. Power plant is this parts. You yes, see control the motor speed and the battery to power the ESC and the motor like this one this is the power plant okay it's now for battery this is a lipo battery 3s 2200 uh, milliamp hour uh, 3s is mean 3 cell so this is this ha this battery has 3 cells one cell is 4.2 volt if fully charged, so the three of them will be 12.6 volt fully charged. And this one is 4S because it has four cell. One, two, three, four. Four cell, and this one is two cells. It has only two cells. 4.2 times 2 is 8.4 volt fully charged okay every plane has uh, its own specification make sure you read the specification uh, the parts needed the battery needed for the planes I always share the battery the parts needed for my plans in description make sure you check this out motor because it has three cables like this only brushless motors has three cables this is also a brushless motor this is more powerful than this and each motor has its own uh, props for the size of props you have to look at the specification of the motor every motor has its own specification uh, you you can you cannot use any props you have to use the the correct prop the correct size prop and what I have told about previously this is servo this actuator this actuator is servo 
it useful for moving the control surfaces like aileron, elevator, rudder, and other stuff like flaps or to retract the landing gear. You can use servo also. And I have talked many things you can do with servos. Okay, that's the main parts. Transmitter, receiver, power plant, and actuator. Okay, this is the example how to connect all those parts. Remember this, this is the ESC. It will be connected to the motor. The motor I connected to the motor. Okay. Okay. It will be powered the ESC. It will be powered the ESC. The ESC will be plugged in channel 3. This is channel 3. Okay. First thing is you have to turn the transmitter first. It's a must for safety. Turn the transmitter. Welcome to X. Okay. Switch warning. Flight mode launch. Okay, it's, it's already on. You plug the battery. The motor will be sound like that, and this is the RX already on because it's already powered with the ESC. As ESC already plugged with the battery, this okay, it's on. You can try to, to I'll try to to turn to. Rotate the motor, this rotor. Okay. Okay. That's the basic setup. It's very, very simple. Okay. Motor connected to ESC, ESC to the battery, and battery to the RX, the receiver, the RX for the servo. This servo just plug in. We try to plug in on channel 1 that's aileron that's channel 1 okay we try the aileron okay then plug on channel 2 try to plug to channel 2 the elevator we try the elevator Again. Channel 3 always for ESC, channel 4 is for other, try to move the other, again, okay. That's it, how to connect the, the electronics, it's very simple, just like that. Last thing, how to turn off the model planes. You have to plug this battery first. The transmitter will have to stay on. You unplug this battery. Now you have to. You are safe to turn off the transmitter. Okay. That's it. Okay, the first thing you need to do after installing the electronics is to calibrate your ESC with the transmitter. First, turn on the transmitter and push the throttle all the way up. Leave it that way. 
Then I plug the battery. After I plug the battery, the the motor will be make a sound and wait for a second and then push pull down the throttle to down position. Okay, I plug waiting for the sound. Okay, that's the sound. Pull down. Okay, your EIC is already calibrated. Calibrated. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Okay. Before checking the control surfaces, I need to make sure this plane already balanced because unbalanced plane will be unflyable and very dangerous to fly. Okay, this is how to balance the plane. Each planes with plans already have CG points mentioned on the plans. In this model, the CG or center of gravity is 4.5 centimeters from the leading edge from the power tip. This is how to how to balance. Use your finger tip to on the CG points and balance the plane. You can see here the tail is a bit down than the nose. It's tail heavy. The plane cannot be fly. It's flyable. It's unflyable. It's dangerous to fly. So what we do? We need to do is move the battery a little bit forward. Okay. Make sure the battery cannot be moved. We balance it again. Okay, the nose is a bit down, so the battery too power. Move a bit to the rear, a bit. Okay. Balance it again. Okay. It looks like it's already balanced. It's good to fly. Okay, check the control surfaces. Rudder, left, okay, right, okay. We move the rudder left, the plane will be yaw to the left, and right, yaw to the right, okay. And the aileron, left, the left aileron up, right, the right aileron up. That's the correct way. So, elevator, elevator down. Elevator up, elevator up, stick up, elevator down. Okay, that's correct configuration. It's good to fly. The maiden flight was not like that I have expected. The plane tend to pitch down and turn right all the time. I was using oversized prop that was 7 inch. I should use 6 inch prop.
I was trying to hand launch the plane after switch the propeller with 5 inch 3 blades props and remove the landing gear and edit down thrust angle to the motor The right turn tendency was reduced, but the pitch down moment still exists. From this time, the wing was already weakened by that crash and caused a wider angle dihedral on the wing. After gave some trim on the elevator and rudder, the plane was kind of easier to control so I gave the control to my son to try to fly it and he done it well. Up trim in the elevator and right trim on the rudder. This is the final modification with new motor mount design with more down thrust angle and edit the angle of incidence on the wing. The plane fly better as I expected. Also, no need to much trim on the elevator.
Okay guys, that's the maiden flag. That's how it fly. It can fly good actually. Although on the first try it's not went very well because the plane felt too heavy and the tendency of this plane always going to the right because of the pitch moment and it's barely controllable but it finally can fly very well with some modification that, that I made I made three modifications first one is uh, adding a angle of incidence on the wing I, I, I rise the leading edge about 5 millimeters and we design this motor mount to give to give the motor down thrust angle like this and the third modification it hasn't been done yet this is my mistake you can, as you can see here this is vertical stabilizer and rudder I put the rudder on one edge like this it's not on the center uh, that's make uh, an airfoil that's like, act like a wing because it's uh, a shape like an airfoil so when the wing passing through it will act like a wing so uh, it will give the air will give lift to the from the left to the right that makes the plane always going to the right that's a full grip I should have remove it remove the hinge and reattach it on the center it have to be on the center okay that's the modification and it can fly very well I already revised the plans so you don't have to change anything just follow the plans and you will be good okay more things before closing I made the wing joiner in two version you can so you can make the wing a little bit diahedral like this or just straight wing and one more thing I designed this plane to be crash proof for beginners so I made this plane strong enough to withstand a crash you can see in this video
Okay, we're closing now, guys. As you know, this project is very long, very late, because I've been sick for several days, almost a week. So it's very exhausting to finish this model. I also haven't have time to continue our project. This is the DC3, just this. For the next model, I will treat myself to make a beautiful jet, a very rare one. It is a T2 dot I, like this. It will be pusher, not EDF, but with three trucks. Okay, see you on next episode.